Hello and welcome to another episode of Supercoach Insider. My name is Chris and I'm bringing to you today uh, my next sort of round of team action. Um, lots of things have changed and just wanted to keep you guys up to date with, with where I'm at with a few different things. Um, some things staying the same, but there is a couple of big changes that I just wanted to roll through. Essentially, this is what generally happens to me in preseason is that I start out with this great idea of this great team and then these value options pop up and I, I want to you know, explore it, try and balance my team out with more value. And then it sort of gets a bit all convoluted. And then I delete my team right before round one and then start again and then see how we go. But I figure if I at least talk to you about these selections, it sort of gives me a bit of clarity um, and sees where I'm at and uh, where the, uh, the community is at as well. Um, so go right through. Um, Stuart Dawson uh, at the back, they still they haven't changed at all. I really doubt if they're going to. Um, they seem to be the two um, of the you know, five, 600K plus defenders that I'm definitely not going to be changing um, outside of potentially changing Stuart to Sicily. Um, but yeah, it's an extra 20 grand. And I think uh, Stuart presents a little bit more value at that price. Um, Hunter Clark is the big is a big change here. So previously I had Himmelberg or I was, I was tossing up between the Himmelberg or Dacos um, at the D3 mark. And I've changed that um, to allow an extra premium in the forward line. And I'll go through a little bit of that theory um, as we move forward. But Hunter Clark is probably, in my opinion, the best value guy in defense outside of Bose. Um, uh, I'm still trying to get talked into by uh, Ben regarding Elliot Yo, And I, I'm not on that train yet, but there's an option that he could potentially come that at some stage. But really with Yo, I mean he only just started running and I'm really nervous about that. Even though there's a, there was a fluff piece basically from West coast this week saying how awesome all their players were coming back from the Christmas break. And I'm like, yeah, that just is membership speak for, we need to sell memberships. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that. Again, I could, we could go into preseason and then everything comes out and we're all good. Now the benefit of someone like a Hunter Clark is that yes, he's had his injuries, but like, the last time he got injured, he got his face taken off. And so they're not generally, you know, they're not soft tissue or anything like that. They're generally kind of, um, contact injuries. And so therefore, I'm a little bit more confident with, you know, it's unlikely that those sort of things happen. Yeah, it's actually, he's actually been really unlucky so far. Um, what scope on Hunter Clark is obviously, you know, um, role related. Uh, what do I think he can average, honestly, anywhere between 80 to 100, depending on his role. If he gets the mid-time, the wheel think he deserves, then he could go all the way up to a hundred style average. He's a very, very good player. And he's someone that they really should look at in that. But I also don't mind him behind the ball anyway, because he does rack up the pill there. So there's at least a hundred K in value in there. And there's a potential that he could come out to be um, a D6. So I don't really mind the pick at the moment, but it's a very tentative if realistically, the main reason why I'm looking at that is because I don't like anyone outside of, say, Himmelberg and Dacos priced below 600 grand. I don't like any of them. Don't like any of the picks. Don't like any of the value at the moment. So going as value as I possibly can um, with an upgrade path and that sort of 300K price point just makes a lot more sense. That's why Bose is in my team as well. And this does level it out because I did actually have um, Goda in this selection uh, for a couple of days there. Um, again, not sure if he's in the best 22, not sure if he's going to be um, you know, a, a potential sub piece or if he's even a, a, a candidate to be subbed as well as be the sub. So uh, that's for that reason, I wanted to get him up to Clark. Um, so yeah, by taking out that Himmelberg selection, I sort of you know, pigeonhole myself into getting these other guys. Um, in regards to the rookies, there's still you know, not much has changed. I've, I've thrown in Wagner there because I, I actually can't afford another 123k guy there. But I was actually chatting with um, Supercoach Mama earlier in the week, and the thing is, like, usually by the time that we have we start the season, there's one or two 102k selections that pop up to allow us to get that little bit extra, squeeze a little bit of extra cash. So last year we had Nick Martin, etc. Um, there are those options that we need to look out for. There's supplementary options that come just before the season starts. Um, so there is, you know, there's, uh, there's at least going to be 15, 20K sitting on my bench that I don't already have. So just be aware of that when you're planning your team. 
obviously onto the midfield. And the big change here is I've actually gone from LDU up to Steel. So that's cost me about 50K there. Um, but the thinking really behind that is I see Steel as someone who's probably got a, he's got a 120 average in him, but he's got a basement of around 110. So as opposed to LDU, who he did uh, you know, prove to average 110 over the back end of the year, we're still really waiting to see if he can go from that 110 to that 120 to 125 player that we think he can be. Um, so we're waiting on that. And so for 50K, it doesn't really seem like you sh- uh, you know, I shouldn't put that money into someone like a Jack Steele and get a, essentially another Uber premium with a long history of really good scoring. Um, so I actually don't mind that little upgrade there. Uh, the other thing is I'm really, I've been talking quite a lot about, again, North's 22. And they've just got so many players in that mid-rotation that could potentially steal um, some points from LDU. So I, I kind of want to see it beforehand. I mean, you now got you know Darcy Tucker. Where's he playing? Is he playing on the ball? Is he playing on the wing? Is he playing behind the ball? He's you know he's got a large skill set and an accurate kick. He could be in there. Um, Hugh Greenwood, uh, Ben Cunnington. Now you know, there's a big puff piece about him coming back. Um, and he's, he wants to slot straight into that midfield. How much mid-time is he getting? Um, they've still got Simpkin. They've got Powell. They've got Will Phillips now. Um, you know, they've got a lot of guys that want to be in this mid-rotation. You know, what does that look like? And so I'm a little bit tentative at this point. Um, so yeah, I went and, and threw that extra money from LDU, um, went up to Steel. Um, the other two value selections there, Green and Mitchell, still stay and Hopper. Um, I only have enough money in this team for one 200k player at the moment i've gone with will ashcroft but i'm still really tentative on it and i did some you know twin best 22 preparation with ben yesterday and he's right on the cusp um now the problem is i can only really see if he makes a team one of him dev robertson and jared berry you know one of them's going to play and that and that person that plays is going to get a little bit of mid time and probably get a little bit of forward time but i can't see that team holding any more than one of those three players so yeah that's going to be interesting because it puts a lot of pressure on Jared Berry who hit some really good form last uh, late last year he's also the guy they go to from a tagging presence but I suppose they have Dunkley now to be able to do that if they really need to um so yeah Ashcroft is still up in the air there's some yeah the talk that I've had uh, uh, that I've that I've heard um you yeah, know last year they said that well Ashcroft could have been playing for them last year so that bodes well for them. I'm just really sort of, ugh. And then, you know, if he does come in, what's his sort of average? What's his role? I don't think his role is going to be great, but I also don't think it's going to be terrible. Uh, there's just some question marks and I'm just really not 100%. But at this stage, I'm going with him. The other one that I've taken out is Oscar Allen, which I'll get to in the forward line. Rookies haven't really changed much on the bench. Um, the ruck line. So big changes here. So... Obviously, looking at uh, uh, Darcy Cameron's locked at R2, but the R1 is the one that I've squeezed the value out of to be able to get Clark and to get LDU up to steel. Um, so I had wits in that in this in this moment. Then I've, I've changed that to English to get a bit more value out of it. That was about 25 grand. And then I've gone all the way down to Marshall. So I suppose this is like all hinging on the fact if Marshall is going to be the number one ruck, if he's going to have you know, 80 to 90% ruck time and then not going to change his role and he comes out in preseason and goes 120-120. Now, if that's the case, you I don't think you can not start with Marshall because he's priced too well to just ignore him in the preseason. So, um, yeah, I mean, I see a worst-case scenario is, let's say he goes, even if he gets injured after six weeks, he's still going to make you 100 grand, and then you can switch him out to any other ruck. Um also, let's say the other option that, and I was chatting to um, uh, a friend of mine, Damien, about this one. Let's say he does play you know, a substantial time forward and it's over 35%. Well, then by round six, he's a ruck forward and then you can switch him forward. So you've got some options there with Marshall that I do like. So it's not all set and forget with Wits or, or English. I think Marshall is potentially the other one that you can look at. And the value that he presents and the ability, what you can do to the rest of your team, I think may be worth it. Uh, so for me, it's you know, go to up to Clark, it's um, LDU up to Steel. So if I go you know, Marshall, Steel, and Clark versus go to LDU and Wits, it's a bit of a no brainer for me. Um, 
Now, the other one I've sort of removed here is Phil Callaghan, of course. So I've just, you know, uh, you know changed him out at this point. Um, another 42K to get down to Ashcroft. Um, now, moving to the forward line. So a big change here is I've actually gone a little bit deeper with the premiums. And I looked into Cornelio scores. And I cannot, I don't think there's a way that I can start without Cornelio. So since Leon Cameron was sacked last year and he went into the midfield, he averaged 111. Now, for me, that promotes at least 50K of value at his starting price right there. And he could have even more mid-time going into the season. So I'm very buoyed by that pick. I think that that's a bit of a no-brainer pick. Outside of Dunkley, I can't see anyone in the forward line coming anywhere close to that kind of average. And for that reason, it's huge value at his price. So I've, I've gone and locked him in. So basically what I've done is I've gone you know, Himmelberg um, out, Cornelio in at this stage. Um, so I've moved him out of the forward line and then added that mid-pricer into defense um, to be able to compensate for, I suppose, a little bit of balance in the team. Taranto's still there. That's not moving. So yeah, so the Dunkley and Taranto not moving. Cornelio is the one I've added. Um, and then, of course, I still got Fife and McLean. I've taken out Oscar Allen because I can't afford that second 200K you know, rookie price guy. Um, and I've gone with Josh Sin on the ground. And the reason for that is um, so Hinkley came out and just said, look, he's going to be the one that's li- likely going to be replacing Ammon in that wing role. But he, but this, there's a caveat to that. He's still about four to five weeks away from full training. Um, so he's in recovery at the moment because he had end of season surgery. So um, I still think that, you know, four to five weeks does mean before round one. But does that mean that he's going to be fit enough to take that role in round one? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, there's a potential that... Um, he might be useful as a loophole player early, um, and then you can you have him in your team. Look, rookies are all sort of wishy-washy at this point anyway, and we won't really know until um, the, at the end of the preseason. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm sitting at the moment, guys. I know it's, it's a we'll have these continual updates as we go. Um, but there's my thoughts leading into round one and part two of our road to round one series. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.